You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 10th of October and I'm Will from Milford. The ASX 200 posted its biggest weekly gain in nearly two years last week after rising 4.5% as speculation around a possible central bank pivot came to the fore. Macro drivers continue to dominate the market's focus as company news takes a back seat. All asset classes were volatile, with the Australian 10-year government bond trading in a 30 basis point range, while the Australian dollar finished the week at two-year lows. While markets became optimistic on central banks slowing their current aggressive hiking cycle early in the week, there was little evidence outside Australia to support this. Fed speakers were quick to reiterate that they will continue raising interest rates aggressively as they haven't seen any evidence that inflation has peaked or labour markets are reason. Friday night's US non-farm payrolls reinforced this message and put to bed any optimism on earlier slowing of rate hikes. The US added 263,000 new jobs in September, a beat on expectations, while the unemployment rate fell to 3.5% from 3.7% the market was expecting. Tight labour markets are a key concern for central banks globally, and this data did nothing to allay those fears that we could be seeing a wage price spiral taking hold. It's not often Australia gets much focus on the global economic stage. However, Reserve Bank Governor Phil Lowe certainly got that post his very dovish statement at the October RBA board meeting last Tuesday. Lowe shocked markets when he decided to raise rates by 25 basis points, even though the market had almost fully priced 50 basis points with a statement that was out of tune with all other major central banks. The Governor noted that they were on no set path of raising interest rates and would watch for further data to guide any decisions. Importantly, they removed reference to raising rates in the coming months, which opened the door for speculation that we may see a pause in rate rises at the next meetings. They also noted that much of the recent tightening was yet to flow through to the economy, and they viewed that the outlook for the global economy had deteriorated recently. Equities ripped, the currency fell sharply, and bonds rallied aggressively post the meeting. In sharp contrast to Australia, the RBNZ raised rates by 50 basis points to 3.5% at their meeting last week and gave every indication that they will keep raising rates rapidly. The statement emphasised that core inflation remains high and labour markets tight, which requires the central bank to continue tightening until consumer spending slows to bring inflation back into the target band. RBNZ, like almost every other central bank besides the RBA, are concerned that if they don't stamp out inflation in a timely manner, it can become entrenched and cause larger problems. Aside from the key central bank news last week, global oil markets were also a focus, as crude jumped over 15% during the week. OPEC announced a larger than expected 2 million barrels a day cut to quotas from November, as the oil cartel seeks to keep oil prices elevated. The US is trying to counter these supply shocks by releasing oil from their strategic petroleum reserves, however it's not clear how long they can continue with this. Many investors are now picking that oil could trade back above $100 a barrel in the near future, which would cause further headaches for central banks in their fight against inflation. The Seek Australian Job Index was released for September last week, showing ad volumes falling 5.2% month on month, the fourth consecutive decline as applications per job ticked up. Job ads are now 10% below the May peak, but remain 53.5% above pre-pandemic levels. Hospitality and tourism and retail continue to see the lowest number of applications per ad, as labour shortages continue to be problematic. However, there is some hope that this data could be the start of an easing in labour markets. In stock news last week, fund manager Magellan's shares fell sharply on Thursday after releasing their September monthly funds under management. Total fund fell from $57.6 billion in August to $50.9 billion in September, with $3.6 billion in outflows. It's quite a fall from Grace and Magellan, who had over $113 billion in fund only 12 months ago, as investors have continued to pull their cash post poor performance and the departure of key staff, including founder Hamish Douglas. The stock fell 8.5% on the day and has fallen over 85% since its 2020 highs. Another company struggling last week was data company Appen, which downgraded EBITDA by 51%, its third downgrade this year. 
Appen has been hit hard by the decline in online ad spend globally, as global tech companies are forced to cut spending in the tougher operating environment. Appen was off 12% on the day of the announcement, and is down over 75% this year. This week, all eyes will be on the US CPI release on Thursday night. This will be key for markets to see whether the central bank tightening is having an impact on rampant inflation as supply chain issues ease. The market will be looking for a small drop in year-on-year headline inflation to 8.1% from 8.3%, with a monthly print of 0.2%, while core inflation, the Fed's preferred measure, is predicted to rise to 6.5% from 6.3% previously. A large move either way is likely to see an aggressive market reaction, particularly after Friday night's bumper job print. Thanks for listening. Have a great week.